with less than five days to the Oshun state governorship election, the Independent National Electoral Commission says the bimodal voters authentication system, also known as BVAS, has been configured and tested for optimal performance in the July 16 polls. INEC National Commissioner and Chairman Information and Voter Education, uh, Festus Okoye, gave the assurance in a chat with the Rise News earlier today. Okoye says the commission will be collaborating with the Nigerian Air Force for the airlifting and distribution of election materials and personnel to remote areas of Oshun State. The electoral body will also meet with stakeholders in the state and sign the peace accord on Wednesday, July 13. Anek is once again appealing to Oshun State indigents to shun vote buying and selling to enable it conduct credible polls. Well, for more on the Oshun election, Patrick Obayago, former member of the House of Representatives of Nigeria, APC chieftain and member, media committee of the Oshun Campaign Council, join us now in the studio. Thank you so much uh, for being on the news tonight. As I see Thanks you, my sister, us. this is what thank you, Ngozi. Okay. Uh, so, in 2018, your party, the APC, won the Oshun state governorship election only after a rerun. Mm -hmm. uh, do you foresee another rerun election in Ocean State, giving your party victory? Not How confident are you? Not at all. I am, I am very aplomb that uh, the victory this time is going to be uh, a landslide victory. Yeah. And that is because in the case of Governor Oyetola, it is a case of political res ipsa loquitur. But that, I mean, the first speaks for itself. Mm. At the time, you are talking about four years ago, the people of Oshun State did not really have any objective political comparendum with which to measure the capacity, the mental poise, the, the extent to which Governor Yetola had cultivated the regime of the mental magnitude to be able to deliver democracy to the dividends of the people. But now, he has a report card. He has a report card, and if you, if the people of Washington State looks at that report card very clinically and objectively, they will return a resounding vote. What in exactly favor. is that report card? I mean, unemployment rate thirty-seven percent, uh, only three point seven percent of the populace covered by insurance, uh, the so-called HIS. Insecurity is a growing problem in Oshun State, especially with the mining uh, sector. You know where all kinds of violence uh, is taking place with illegal miners. Uh, you know uh, having a field day. Exactly what is this scorecard you talk about? So as not to make this repartee uh, to be riddled in Sphyxian conundrums or verbagogical rigmaroles. I'm going to rattle through the fast with a barrel of a gun, and these are these right. are these are hard facts. And I'm going to compartmentalize Governor Oyetola's achievements within the praxis and maxis of the economy, health, agriculture, infrastructure, and welfare of workers. And I'll speak to some uh, bullet points. It will interest you to know that the Oshun budget performance has improved from 58% in 2018, when it got into power, to 86.48% in 2021. That is a, a conocopious testamentary to its fiscal responsibility. I, I want to equally bring to your attention and bring under focal biceps and biceps that the budget of, of, of Oshun State in terms of capital projects have increased from 59.95 percent in 2018 to 64.43 percent in 2021. Mm. And it will interest you to know that Oshun State has the fourth lowest unemployment rate in the country and the second lowest in the southwest region. And these are brass, these are brass tax. What's the percentage of that unemployment rate? How will you, you work it out? At, well, work it out. The, the figure I just gave you, 37% unemployment by any standards, is not a pass mark. No, 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 if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you take notice of the fact and take immutable recognition of the fact that Oshun State is a microcosm in a microcosm. It's a state operating within the context of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, right. and, you, and you judge that against what is happening across the left and Federal Republic of Nigeria, you will give me a pass back. Especially when you know that that is a state where you don't have oil, 
especially when you know that that is a state it, before before Oyetola came on board. There was a time after federal allocation has been distributed in Abuja, that state that state took home nothing less nothing less than 1.1 million naira. It is due to his physical it's due to his physical husbandry mm. and due to the fact that he has increased the, interna the internally generated revenue of that state. Is, is, is the reason why he has done, he has done the most he, 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 he has done. Okay, so let's talk about security. Because even INEC, the electoral body, has raised concerns about the level of uh, security and cultism in Ocean State ahead of this election. Uh, is that not a worry? I don't think that is, I don't think that is a cause for mental pabulum. Uh, I said that against the backdrop of the fact that there is low crime rate in Ocean State. Oshu state, Oshu state, and Oshu, Oshu government has been able has been able to curb the rate of crimes in their state. So I think it is a, it is alarmist, and a, it is a, it is no cause for, for for worry. Is this alarmist to disrupt collection of PVCs? Because we saw that happen in Elisha. Mm -hmm. Is that alarmist it's a, it's a, for it's thugs a, to have a free day in broad daylight? disrupt people from collecting the PVCs which will allow them to vote come July 16th. Is that alarmist? You can't justify that. But what we are saying here, yeah. on a broader scale, if you, if, you look at, if you look at the ratio of 1 to 10, I am saying to you on the ratio of 1 to 10, Ocean, Ocean State is free of crime to the tune of about, to the tune of about 7 to 8%. Yeah. You, certainly cannot, uh, you certainly cannot totally in Kabudolo and Mubudo ex, ex, extirpate. You know some some of those deviant behaviors, but you do not now use such infinitesimal quantum to now uh, give a generic pontification right, as to what is the crime rate in Oshu State. All right, we'll give you that, but uh, there are serious concerns about security uh, w around the election. Come July 16, the Oshun people will be going to the polls. How confident are they that? Their lives and property will be protected. You know, we are considering the level of, uh, you know, uh, politics by all means, victory by all means, do or die tendencies, you know, growing tendencies as far as that's concerned. How do you guarantee that the people will be protected, you know, before, during, and even after the election? And there's that issue of vote buying. There are concerns that the ruling party will use any means, including vote buying or vote trading, as mm -hmm. some would refer to it, uh, to gain the upper hand. In a, con in, a con in, a, in a country where our system of government still anchors around prebendalism, mm -hmm. in a country where our system of government is still highly mercantilistic, in a country where our system of government is still practicing crude and primitive capitalism. It will be sheer vacuous hocus pocus. It will be sheer jickery pokery for me to sit down here mm -hmm. and say to you that the issues you have raised, the issues you have brought under focal biceps and biceps are not issues to worry about. It is right. up to the security, it's up to the security agents of this country to ensure that justice is done, it is, sure, it is up to the security of this country to ensure that they monitor the elections and bring to justice anybody that wants to take the laws into his hands. That is, that is, up, to the, that is up to the security agencies. And what about voter apathy? We just had an off-season election in Ekiti, and we saw the numbers of people who came out to elect the next governor uh, for the next four or eight years. Are you concerned, and what's your party doing uh, to ensure we don't see a repeat of that well vote you you cannot you cannot blame you cannot blame you cannot blame the voters when they when they don't come out to vote who do we blame uh, you blame government which government that the is APC, because of the matter you the blame APC over the years you blame gov you blame government you blame government over the years mm. the truth of the matter is that government has not risen up to its constitutional onus probandi in, 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 in providing democracy dividends for the people. And against that backdrop, therefore, the people feel a sense of psychological and emotional anathema towards, towards their civic rights. And but you're not going to see In almost eight yes. years, in almost eight years, Nigerians still don't have the confidence that their votes will count. You are not Is going that to, what you're saying? You are not going to see this in Oshun 
because Governor Oyetola has lifted the bar, has lifted the bar. The workers in Oshun State are happy. The workers are going to come out to vote. He has fulfilled his constitutional obligations to the workers in, 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 in Oshun State. In every material particular, I can assure you that you are going to see a paradigm shift. You are going to see a paradigm shift in terms of, in terms of the mobilization, in terms of the emotional paroxysm of racism that Oshun lights are going to show in this election. We'll have to leave it there. Right. Patrick Obayagbo, APC chieftain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you can be sure of that. We will, we are on ground already mm -hmm. in Oshun to give you all the uh, events as they unfold yeah. uh, there in Oshun. The Patrick Obayagbo, APC chieftain, uh, me, uh, member media committee of Oshun Campaign Council, joining us there. Mm -hmm.